Reports in Italy have confirmed that US billionaire Dan Friedkin has indeed reignited his plan to buy Everton two months after seemingly cooling his interest in the club. So Friedkin reportedly back in the frame. My colleague Alex Crook can bring us right up to date this lunchtime. Well, it seems Everton releasing a statement last week confirming there was still work to be done in John Texter's proposed takeover has piqued the attention of Roma owner Dan Freakin. Now, you may remember Freakin was granted a period of exclusivity back in the summer, but pulled out of a potential deal after spotting some red flags in the Toffees accounts relating to money owed in outstanding loan payments. I understand loose talks have taken place between Freakin and Everton about potentially reviving the deal, but it would need Farhad Mashiri to lower his asking price to less than £300 million. As for Texter, he remains determined to complete the purchase of the Merseyside club, but that will be dependent on him selling his shares at Crystal Palace, and that may just open the door for a rival bid from Freakin or indeed one of a number of other interested parties. Mashiri remains confident that a solution can be found to help Everton as they prepare to move into their brand new stadium at Bramley Moordock. Simon, I just had this image. Alex, thanks for that. I had this image of uh, Evertonians around the country when they heard the news about Freak and say, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever, whatever. I mean, we've seen, and I met Josh Wonder, 7-7 Partners. Yeah. Where have they gone? They're no longer uh, in, in, the, in the thing. Now Freakin was in, was out and was in. Uh, and all the time John Texer is in the background. I mean, what do we believe? What do you believe? Um, I think dealing with Fahid Mashiri is like nailing a jelly to the wall. So I imagine it's pretty difficult to, do, to deal with him. My my understanding of Friedkin is he's bought the debt. So the reasons why certain people are no longer in the equation, maybe George Downing and maybe Andy Bell, <clears throat> was because the debt that they put in there was taken out and replaced by Friedkin. Now, that's my understanding. It might be wrong, but I don't think it is. So that means that he's a significant player in the acquisition of this football club. And all of them are going to circle around trying to buy this football club, giving Fahid Mashiri as little as possible, which is, quite frankly, probably what he deserves, given the fact he's turned what was once a great football club into a clown college of embarrassment because they are in a terrible state because of the mismanagement, not because the guy isn't capable and not because he hasn't made ten times the amount of money that I've made in my life and probably likely to make, but because he has no knowledge of the industry that he spent seven or eight years wasting his money and maybe Usmanov's money, who knows. The point is this, is that you're in a situation where Everton needs to be acquired. Texter, if you're Mashiri, you want to create as many opportunities to have competitive tension in the conversation as you possibly can. If you're Friedkin, um, you have got an enormous amount of money. Mm. You, you know, you come from a background where your father, I think, owned Chrysler businesses all around America, and they're very, very wealthy. Um, and you now potentially have some of the debt on this football club. So you want to preserve your position on the debt. You want to make sure that you're getting repaid it and you might have to restructure it and re-engineer it. So all of these equations are leading to a conclusion that will bring Mashiri some form of outcome. My understanding of it is that Mashiri doesn't have enormous amounts of money left and he doesn't have enormous amounts of money that he can draw from this business. The club's got a lot of debt on it. It's got a football stadium on the other side of it which will give it a huge opportunity to be able to come out of the challenges that it's brought upon itself in a few years' time. So he'll take what he can get. Well, he'll take what he's given in the end mm. and eventually they've got to force this pill down his throat so that when he has to write checks out, because at this moment in time, Everton may have a bit of cash flow. They may have a bit of cash flow that's weathering the storm and Texter himself referred to it. Yeah. And talked- well, he said a few things, Simon. Yeah. Did you find it odd that Everton then jumped in after Texter said what he said about Everton still being a Crystal Palace shareholder. I mean, Everton jumped in and said, um, the comments made by Mr. Texter merely represent his personal view on club matters. I mean, they, they, they jumped on to try and snuff it out because Texter m- mentioned Sean Dyche. I mean, well, it's a bit Everton say everyone at the club staying focused on providing the best support possible to Sean Dyche and the squad as we head into the weekend's fixture. Well, I think it's, inappropriate. Fixture, I think it's inappropriate what John Texter said. I don't think he's in a position to say those things. Um, you know, the fact that he was on another conversation not adding things up properly um, and we ridiculed that and I clarified it in terms of people can make arithmetic mistakes. Yeah, but it I do think it, odd though. I do think it's inappropriate for him to talk about the future of Sean Dyche and what he can and can't manage and manage, can he manage big time players or whatever else he said. I'm not sure that's the right thing for him to be saying. It will show you the American model. If he's talking like this before he owns a football club, Christ knows what he's going to say when he actually owns it because <laughs> he doesn't care what he's saying prior to it. 
Um, mm. And and whether it's and whether Everton should snuff it out, that's for, that's for them, isn't it? It's their football club. Of course, it's John Tex's um, opinion. You know, <laughs> he's the one that said it. Yeah. I mean, who, has, who else's opinion was it? So it's a bit of a non-statement. Um, but the bottom line is, is that the sooner that Everton rid themselves of Mashiri and find themselves someone that's capable of running this football club, the sooner they're going to be in a better position. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.